Let's take a look at lesson two practice problems from unit six. So this one says match each corresponding rule to a description of the resulting transformation. Um, so some things to look at here, what I would look for is some key words and match those two possibilities. So here I see translate and translations look like this with addition or subtraction in them. So I know that each of these is a type of translation. So that rules out B um, for me. So all of the rest of these say translation in them. So the only one that doesn't say translation is number three. So this one is a dilation and we know that because of the multiplication. So B goes with number three. So dilation around the origin by a scale factor of two. So B matches to three. Um, and then you kind of want to match these um, translations, what they're doing um, to the X and the Y. So this one is moving three to the right and nothing in the Y. So that's going to go to the point three, zero. So that's going to go from zero. Like if I plugged in zero, zero here, what I would get back is three, zero. So that's going to go with number two. Okay, you see that zero, zero to three, zero. And so I don't know if it's better to leave these here and draw an arrow maybe. All right, so, num so B went to number three. And then um, A, this zero, zero to three, zero went to number two. So this one, if we looked at zero, zero here, so plugging in zero, zero, we would get back zero and we would get back four. So it's gonna go from zero, zero to zero, four. So zero, zero to zero, four is number one. D is gonna go from zero, zero to zero, negative four. So zero, zero to zero, negative four is number four, and that leaves E for number five. So let's clean this up a little bit. So this was C, this was A, this was B, this was D, and this was E. All right, draw the image of the triangle under this transformation. So this means X is going to map to X minus four. That's going to move it to the left four units. And then Y plus one is going to move it up one unit. So every point here, we're going to move to the left one and up, or sorry, to the left four and up one. So A is going to go to the left four, one, two, three, four, up one. One, two, three, four, up one. One, two, three, four, up one. And then that's going to give us our new triangle. Oops, I don't need an arrow on there. And then we want to label this um, T, it said. Okay, so that's T. And then draw the image of triangle ABC. So back to the original under the transformation XY maps to opposite XY. So we're going to take the opposite X coordinate. So let me write out these ordered pairs um, for each point. So A is the point two, three. So that's going to map to the opposite of X. So the opposite of positive two is negative two. And then Y is going to stay the same. And let me change colors here. Oops. All right, so then um, point B is the point four, two. So again, this is gonna map to the opposite. So negative X means opposite of X, not just negative. So that negative out front means opposite. So four is gonna to map to negative four, and then the Y coordinate is going to stay the same. C is the point three, five. So again, that's gonna to map to the opposite of three, and then the same Y. 
And so what's happening here is we're getting a reflection across the Y axis since these X's are just opposite. So instead of going to two, three, we're going to go to negative two, three. Instead of going to four, two, we're going to go to negative four, two. Instead of going to three, five, we're going to go to negative three, five. And that's going to give us our new um, image. So it just ends up being a reflection across the Y axis. And then label that R. Whoops. Here are some transformation rules for each rule. Describe whether the transformation is rigid, meaning congruent. Okay, so the shape stays the same size. So we're doing a translation, a rotation, a reflection, but the image is staying congruent. Dilation would mean similar or neither. So this one here that you just subtract two, subtract three. So we're just moving to the left two and down three. So this one is gonna be rigid. It's just a translation from zero, zero to negative two, negative three. B has multiplication, so that will say that it's going to change size. Since these two numbers are different, so we're not multiplying by the same scale factor, this one is going to be neither because it's going to get two times wider but three times taller, so it's not going to be similar. Versus C, since these are the same, it's going to be a dilation. So these are going to stay similar. The scale factor is three. Um, this next one, okay, kind of interesting the way this is written. We could rewrite this X part as negative X and then plus two. So this one is doing kind of a reflection and a translation because we've got that negative or the opposite of the X and we're moving to the right. So this one is still going to be rigid because it's just a translation and a reflection together. All right, reflect triangle ABC over the line X equals zero. So let's plot the line X equals zero so we can see it. Um, so X equals zero is the Y axis. And call the new triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, then reflect that over the line Y equals zero. All right, so this one, the green one is X equals zero. Okay, and then the pink one is Y equals zero. So Y equals zero is the X axis. And call that A double prime prime, B double prime, C double prime. Then what single transformation would take A, B, C to A double prime, B double prime, C double prime? So let's reflect over the green line first. So A is one to the right. So A prime will be one to the left. C is three to the right. So we'll go three to the left. B is two to the right. So we'll go two to the left. And here's our Oops, here's our new image. Now we want to take this image and we want to reflect it over the Y axis. Okay, so now we're going to flip over the Y, or sorry, the X axis. So this point is going to stay. This one is one above, so now it'll be one below. This one is one below, so now it will be one above. And we'll get our new shape here. So actually, I'm going to delete out these so we don't get lost with those anymore. So here's our new triangle. So what one motion would have taken us from this black one to this pink one? And so that looks like it's going to be a 180 degree rotation. So rotate, 100, rotate the triangle clockwise using the origin 180 degrees. 
All right, reflect the triangle over the line y equals 2. So let's plot the line y equals 2. So a y equals line is a horizontal line. So y equals 2 is right here. So let's reflect the triangle first over that line. So A is going to stay in place. B is 3 below, so B prime is going to be 3 above. C is 2 below, so C prime is going to be 2 above. And that will get us our new um, triangle here. So let's label those. So A and A prime are the same. C prime here, B prime here. And then connect them. So here's our new triangle. Then translate the image by directed line segment from 0, 0 to 3, 2. So this is going to be 3 to the right and 2 up. So we're going to take every point and move it 3 to the right. So 1, 2, 3, and 2 up. 1, 2, 3, 2 up. 1, 2, 3, 2 up and get our new image here. So let me connect these again. And so this is our C double prime was here. Okay, this one was A double prime. This one was B double prime. So what are the new um, vertices? So A double prime is at what, negative two, one, two, three, four. So negative two, four. B double prime is at one, two, three, seven. So negative three, seven. And C prime is at zero, six. C double prime is at zero, six. All right, density um, is mass divided by volume. So in this problem, it tells you uh, that the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. If the density of an object is less than that, it will float. If it's higher than that, it will sink. Higher than one, it'll sink. So will a cylindrical log, so we've got a cylindrical log, so we're going to be doing volume. Okay, so remember that will be important that it's a cylinder because the volume will equal area of the base times the height. Um, it has a radius of 0.4 meters. Okay, so the radius of this is 0.4 meters. And the height is 5 meters. And its mass is 1,950 um, kilograms. Is it going to sink or is it going to float? So the mass here is 1,950. So now we just need the volume. So we'll need to do um, area of the base times the height. So the way that we do the area of the base would be pi times the radius squared. So pi times 0.4 squared. And so... Um, 0.4 times 0.4 is 0.16. So we'd have 0.16 pi for the area of the base. So then if we multiply that 0.16 times pi, um, we get the area of the base is 0 0.502654, blah, blah, blah. And then the height of this is five so for volume we'll multiply those together so point multiply that decimal times five and we get the volume is 2.5 and um let's see 0.4 five meters okay and then the mass is kilograms all right so then 1950 divided by 2.5 so the density of this is going to be 780 um, grams per cubic centimeters. So that is much higher than one. So this is gonna sink. All right, number seven, um, these three congruent square pyramids can be assembled to a cube 
with side lengths of three. So remember a cube um, has all of its lengths being equal. Okay, so all of these are three. Um, what's the volume of each pyramid? So to find the volume of a cube, remember you just take a side cubed. So we just take this side and cube it. So the volume of this cube is gonna be 27. And then each of these three pyramids is identical. Okay, so all three of these have the same exact volume. So we'll just divide this by three to figure out how big each one is. So 27 divided by three gives us nine cubic feet. Then number eight says reflect square ABCD along line CD. So we're gonna reflect it um, over CD. So here's the line CD. So we're gonna reflect it over here. Whoops, that's a circle. All right, so if we reflect this um, square over that line, you're just gonna end up with the square here. C and C prime, D prime would stay in the same spot. And then here would be A prime, B prime. Um, what would be the ratio of the length of segment A to A prime? Okay, so here's A to A prime would be this one um, compared to the length of A to D. So then here would be just A to D. So if we just called the length of this, the original square, if we just called it S, then this length here would be S since a reflection sends it the exact same length over the line of reflection. So the length of A to A prime would be 2S. And then we would compare that to the length of just AD, which would be S. So if we divide out the common factor of S, we would be down to a two to one ratio, no matter what S was. Whatever S is, A to A prime is gonna be two times bigger than A to D 